Hey guys, I'm gonna do another Michelangelo study. I got this guy again because I don't. Know, I just think he looks really cool. And man, I don't want to go that high. And I'm gonna draw him again. <laughs> I might do a third one. I don't know. I was thinking this one. <clears throat> I'll color him in, and uh, then I'll. I'll use uh, markers and some color pencils to do that. Um, but and then the the next one I'll try watercolor. I don't know if I'll draw him again for the next one, but I'll definitely do watercolor just to just to like experiment with this stuff. Um, kind of want to go for like a menacing look. Um, haunted mummy dude which is pretty easy with the reference so here I'm just gonna speed it up and then do a voiceover Let's see this part of the sketching I was I was looking at the toy as reference but I was kind of like tilting the head and changed the facial expression a little bit not too much um, and then I was using the uh, the uh, toy as like a, a color guide with shadow slightly oh and then this hand um, I changed the hand up a little bit like his thumb goes like differently you know just so it could hold the uh, little weapons that came with the toy um, so I changed the, th the thumb, but I was copying the, uh, like the, that arch in the hand that the, uh, old school villains did, or monsters did in the, those old horror movies. Um, I really like how that looks anyway, the, uh, the bend in the hand, it just looks really cool when you, when you draw somebody like that. It doesn't look, I don't think it really looks that cool anymore in like a horror movie. <laughs> It looks like over dramatic, but it works really good in drawings or paintings or I think cartoons, animated features. Um, let's see. And then, oh yeah, I kept stopping a lot. And then I would, because <clears throat> I, when I record, I have like this phone uh, recording like right in front of my face. Uh, it's funny how I got kind of used to that. But uh, yeah, I would look at the phone because I don't know, like things, errors to me, or yeah, things that look like errors to me uh, stand out when I'm looking at through the phone. It's kind of like when that trick that people use when uh, they're drawing, they'll use a mirror and like look at their drawing through the mirror or hold their drawing up to a light with the paper um, on the other side. So then they could, it looks just different to them so they can notice different things. Or when people uh, flip their drawings or paintings uh, horizontal on Photoshop or whatever digital media they're using. Uh, and then, yeah, those wrinkles, I remember having... I wasn't sure exactly what I wanted to do because I was looking at the toy and kind of copying the wrinkles, but I was also thinking, like, this guy doesn't look that dehydrated like a mummy should. Um, like his skeleton isn't showing his face still looks like plump but then I was thinking like what if I do it like a skeleton looking face and won't look like Michelangelo either so that's probably what they kind of concluded when they're making the toy so anyway yeah I just kind of made it look like he's slightly dehydrated with extra cracks on his face um, so anyway, yeah, I'm just, uh, sketching over the whole thing. I well, kind of just wanted to speed through this because, well, speed through the whole thing, I guess, because it's kind of boring. Like, it's only one picture I'm working on. I'm not doing, like, sketch studies or anything that that's pretty fun to watch. I mean, it is for me anyway. I've been watching, uh, a few people's sketch studies that they do on YouTube. And, uh, yeah, they're pretty entertaining. Um, I'll probably, I might do a few of those. 
uh, let's see. Oh, the pen I'm using is a uh, Bic um, Ultra Fine Lime Green color. I bought these pens a long time ago at Sam's Club. It was like a big pack. And they were, uh, I think it was like eight co different colors, maybe nine. And they all came like ultra fine, fine, and then it was like bold. Uh, I can't really remember the sizes. I think the bold sizes were like 1.6 millimeter. And then these ones, ultra fine. It, uh, I'm looking at the pen right now. I guess it doesn't say, but it did on the box what size they were. Um, <clears throat> I really like this, uh, these colored pens because they like draw really smooth and like the ink comes out, they don't blot up and clot. Like, uh, I remember, I remember like a few years ago I tried to buy some pens, I don't know what brand it was, but the, uh, the colored ones would like get like that. They would clog up and it would be tough to write with. I'd have to try scribbling on a different paper, trying to get the ink to flow again. But, um, yeah, this pen, like, I think it's five, six years old around there, and, uh, it was drawing pretty, pretty smooth. Um, oh, I ended up adding his nunchucks there, because, um, I, I couldn't really think of what to do with his other hand. I think, if, if you look back, you kind of see I was trying to make another... Uh, like horror hand kind of like a uh, bent like the other one the first hand that I drew it didn't look very menacing so I was like I'll just draw him with a weapon and that's not the nunchuck that came with the toy I think that one I don't know I don't know where that prop is for the toy right now but I don't think I, I didn't look at it anyway I just went from memory of what nunchucks look like um, yeah, I don't, I don't know if anybody else watched the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles growing up. The, uh, first cartoon, anyway. I think it started in the 80s. I remember watching, when I really started watching it, it was already, like, syndicated. It would come on every day after school. Like, 1990. I was, like, as soon as I got off school, I had enough time to, like, put all my stuff away. And then... Change the channel to, I don't even remember what channel it was, but Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles were on, and I was like, awesome. And then that was that was like my day. I had to I had to do that like every single day after school. Uh, from what I remember, it was only one time that I missed the cartoon. Um, I tried to rewatch the cartoons a few years ago. I, I bought some of the DVDs. And, yeah, they were pretty corny, but, I mean, they were aimed at kids, and, like, it was, uh, I guess, perfect at the time. Um, so I'm pretty nostalgic about it. I, I liked it. And, and some of the cartoons, they, uh, they hold up. Um, not, not the later ones when it was getting kind of crazy. I think, I remember one where it seemed... A little ridiculous was uh, April's friend I forget her name but she like turned into a giant and oh and then this one guy at work <laughs> it was pretty funny because he was telling me he was explaining this one scene of like these magic beans that Splinter had uh, no I forget how it went but it was like Shredder had like these big gel globs I'm probably butchering how it really went because I, I seen a YouTube video of this where people were explaining the same thing uh, okay so there's like these globs that were like trapping the turtles I think and they couldn't move and then Splinter had like some magic beans suddenly that he always had that could destroy something I don't know it was all like just way out there like what the, the, these writers aren't even trying um and I was, I was I guess I don't even remember watching that episode that must that had to have been like one of the later ones and this guy at work he was saying how it, that's why the, that first iteration of 
animated shows of the turtles was uh, dumb. And at work, we have to have uh, earplugs in. And like we're and we were where we were at, we were in front of these fab machines that we were operating. So we're like yelling at each other, like really loud, trying to so we could hear each other. And he's saying like, "Yeah, it's it's so stupid." And he, like that's that's how the cartoon ran is just ridiculous. And I was like, that had to have been the later one, like just what I explained. I was, and uh, and then I was also like, and I would respect your opinion more if you didn't just watch a YouTube video and say exactly what they just said. He's like, how dare you? Uh, I mean, we're just joking around with each other, but uh, and then he brought up um. Like, yeah, me and my wife, we watched all of the episodes. He kept saying that. So so I would believe him that he, like, knew what he was talking about. But he was, he's, he, th but he would also say weird things like, they didn't even have personalities back then. I was thinking, what do you mean not personality? You couldn't tell them from, apart from each other. Uh, they were all the same turtle, basically. But, like, I was... Like in the very opening song, the theme song, you know, they say how they're different from each other other than their changed colors on their... But anyway, yeah, like, so Donatello, it says Donatello leads, or Leonardo leads, and Donatello has the machines. I don't remember Raphael. I think they said something like he was a, not badass, but rude, something like that. And then Michelangelo is the party guy. Like that, that like separates them all right there. So like when you're watching the cartoon, you, and they stay pretty, from what I remember, they stay pretty true to that formula. And uh, he was like, "No, they don't." And anyway, yeah, it turned into a, it was like a long argument of us us just yelling at each other because we can't even hear each other, probably half the time. Um. It was pretty hilarious, and yeah, he kept saying he watched the whole thing with his wife, but whatever. I don't know if that's true or not. Anyway, yeah, like I said, it's pretty nostalgic for me, so I was I was just keep arguing like, no, you're you don't know what you're talking about. You're wrong. You're wrong. Like that uh, donkey from Family Guy. Um. Oh yeah. Okay. So I already m I just missed this part. Uh, the sketch marker that I'm using right there is a warm one and then I went to a warm two of uh, for the I was gonna use them for like the shadows but then I figured it would work for those bandages on them too I like the warm because it has kind of like that uh sepia kind of skin tone tint to it so it looks like you know to me it looks like the person's like living a little bit like alive um, I was thinking about going with the cool gray, but uh, now I'm going in with the warm three. I think that worked really good for covering his teeth, too. Um, but yeah, I was going to go in with the cool gray, but that has like a bluish tint to it, and it looks more like machinery to me. But, I mean, I know this guy's not alive, but I don't know, it just matched better. Um, okay, that's a warm four. I'm using the other side, not the chisel tip. These are the, uh, what are these? The, that doesn't say on the marker. I think they're the sketch markers. What? No, not the sketch. Uh, the artist marker version of it. Like, they're wider, so they can hold more ink. The sketch ones are, like, a little skinnier, and they have that, like, paintbrush end. This one just has a chisel tip and uh, that little pointed tip. <laughs> All right, and now I'm going in with the Derwent, uh, let's see, May Green. I'm trying to, like, I was testing these on the paper, like, right on the side of it. So I didn't have a plan with the greens. I just had a bunch of uh, really old sketch um, color crayons, or color, color pencils that I just decided to bring out. Um... And, uh, oh yeah, the, the first green I used was lime green for the Copic markers. And so this, I'm trying to kind of like blend it all in, tie it in together. I wanted to make this thing look sketchy. Um, but I ended up 
kind of like overworking it. All right, that's another green, a new green. Oh, which one is that guy? All right, that one is mineral green, Derwent, Derwent colored pencil. I bought these, I bought a pack of Derwent colored pencils years ago, like probably eight years ago. And I, I don't ever use them. You could tell because the pencils aren't even worn down or nothing. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was just thickening up some shadows and trying to make things pop out and stand out more. Also, I'm switching that up. I got olive green in there too. I guess I'm going bouncing between the three. May green, mineral green, olive green, all Derwent Studio. Oh, there's an aqua, aqua, aquarelle, whatever. Uh, that's the brown one. I don't know the name of that one, but I, the number on there says 176. So, And plus, they don't even, their uh, watercolor color pencils don't even... Uh, they don't look like that anymore, I know, because these are, like, really old also. Um, I just bought a few, and they look... They look pretty close to those Derwent Studios, the um, Faber-Castell watercolor pencils. Uh, let's see, now I got... Like I said, I have a whole bunch of colored pencils I bought through the years. Uh, so I got that Stettler Orange. That was, like, a pack of 12, I think. I just thought that they look cool, and they said they got... They said that they don't break... Um, you can see a little white whiteness around the color pencil lead there. Uh, that's that was supposedly at the time thing that says it keeps it from breaking. And then I know that there's a few color pencils in here that I just went and grabbed. Like I don't even know I don't even remember what they were. Like I didn't keep anything organized, or I should have wrote down what I was using. So, I mean, I'll do my best. I'll put it in the description, the colors that I know for sure that I used. But there are a few in there that, like, you'll you'll see later. I was, I was kind of, like, panicking because, like, the, I was trying to get the green to blend in. But it wasn't working for him, especially on his nose there. I was, like, throwing in all kinds of different colors, like, uh, finding green. I think I even used mint green uh, for, from the Prismacolor Premiere thing. And, it to, and at the end, to me, it kind of looks a little uh, weird because I only used that mint green on his face. I didn't go through and use it on the whole, the rest of the picture. Uh, I usually kind of do that at least, like, do, like, a little bit of a blanket color. It's just so it ties the whole um, picture in. To me, I don't, I think a few people do that. I don't know if that's a, I have no idea if that's, like, the best way to go. Um, oh, and that shoulder was bothering me too. Like it, it looks like it just pops out weird. That front delt muscle of his. So like I go over there a lot. I believe I'm trying to touch it up. I, I'm really happy with how the neck is turning out. Like uh, the, how I did that is like how I think I should did approach the nose instead of trying to put like a mean highlight on there I should have just not concentrated so much on the highlight like just leave the highlight on the top of his head that's where I kind of changed from like when I was looking at the toy it didn't have that huge reflection of highlight there but I was like I'll just put it in anyway and this this is a color like I don't know what color that is but like I was really upset with I wasn't blending in the uh the lime green and Copic marker to the rest of the nose. It looked like a, too abrupt of a highlight to me. But after looking at it on the video, I was thinking I could have just left it. It's fine. It looks sketchy enough, which was the goal I was that I really wanted. I didn't want to like polish it up and do what I'm doing now, which I think I'm kind of overworking it. But I mean, that's that's like also part of like why I'm experimenting like this. So I'm not very much of a colorist. Um, which also I'm working on my comic as a, I'm coloring it myself. So I was kind of uh, using this as an excuse to do a little bit of color work, painting, coloring. Um, and get used to that, try new things, which I did. Uh, and I'll continue to do that. I'll probably throw up a few 
few more videos. Like I said, I'm gonna do a watercolor video next. It's my plan. Um, these videos don't go like the fastest. Uh, this this thing took me about two hours, two hours and nineteen minutes. Uh, that's what the recording said. But then the the editing, I kind of just do it over the next couple weeks, little by little. Um, this voiceover is like one of the last parts. Uh, so, anyway, yeah. And then now what I'm doing is like, I'm just still also throwing, throwing together all these greens, bouncing back. Oh, and I found out that using an eraser picks up color pencils, which works pretty good. Uh, I started using this purple um, to do more shadow. Uh, I really liked how the purple, and then I also, I was going to jump in between different reds also and, and those worked really good for shadows I know like probably some of you guys are used to painting and stuff or know a little bit more about color theory <laughs> probably thinking like of course these things work or you know a better technique but um anyway yeah I, I didn't really want to do too much research I kind of just wanted to jump in uh just, just so I didn't like feel like too having to adhere to rules or anything. This, because also I did this as a little bit, not just experimenting, but um, uh, what do you call it? like a uh, blown off steam? Because I was basically all I'm doing is coloring my comic book every free time, every free chance that I have. But then I was like, I got, I got to do something. And this uh, mummy guy is what came up next. There's another watercolor uh, color pencil. That one, I believe, is number... Oh, man, doesn't even have the number on this thing. Well, it looks yellowy tan. Anyway. <laughs> the next video, I'll, I'll definitely write down these things as I'm using them so I have a better list but like I said I'll, I'll do my best to put the list of what I used in the description the when I'm using that eraser I, I have I had to keep uh, going on to a different piece of paper and then like whatever it picked up I had to like erase it off of the other paper because it would get like it would pick up so much of the uh, color pencil it would kind of be like slimy and then start smearing it onto the next area so yeah, just a note to keep in mind. Uh, okay, I believe this is a purple again. I'm using for a shadow. Not sure if that one's Derwent or Fabric Castell. I guess it was Dur Derwent. Uh, let's see, what else? Oh yeah, now I was trying to do some, um, what do you call, uh, hatching to get some shadow in there. Like I wasn't, I was still not sure how how to blend that nose with the highlight. I think I, I at some point I kind of give up on it and just decide to leave it. Um, it. It still stands out to me looking at the picture. This is done on my uh, sketchbook. It says Canson Drawing it has the green cover. It says XL on there. But yeah, it's 60 pages, uh, Canson drawing. I like it because it's like a little thicker than the Strathmore drawing paper. Like that's all it says on there is drawing. I don't know what the uh, weight is for Strathmore. Uh, but yeah, the Canson, the Canson is a little bit thicker paper. So I just, I like that. So if I ever want to take one of these things out, I could... I don't know, feels like it has more sturdiness to it. And I don't know if this ever happened to anybody, but like, if you ever took out paper and it's like a windy day, which it always is here in North Dakota, uh, and then like the wind blows the paper and then bam, you got like a big crease right in the middle of it. Uh, I guess that would still happen to this paper. Never, I mean like... I don't know what I'm saying. Don't take your paper out when it's windy. Frame it. 
Anyway, uh, okay, yeah, so now I'm going, I'm trying to get a gold technique, which is basically using the yellow and then orange. Some type of orange, that was an orange prisma. I want to say that was Spanish orange. Uh, that seems to make it, things look, look gold when you look at them. So I, I didn't really try to, the main thing I was worried about was uh, his face and his neck. Like, I was like, as long as I could make those look okay. Which I think I did. Um, the, obviously the nose, <laughs> that highlight on his nose still bothers me. And I'm trying to tone down the highlight on his hand because it doesn't really seem to match up after all the polishing up I was doing on his face and neck. Um, but yeah, you kind of like live and learn which is, I don't know, I think that's the point of drawing, coloring, whatever. Now for the background, I'm using the Copic E77 Maroon. Uh, I picked brown because, you know, brown is kind of like that, it's like a dark red um, from what I look like, what I look at on color wheels. And, and that kind of ties in more with the the warm tones, uh, warm grays I was using for his uh, bandages, and also the shadows, the like red and purple shadows. And this is, I don't know, I'm just, oh yeah, so like this is where I'm, the drawing artist side of me was trying to pull this together. Like, see, I'm using black uh, color pencil there, and I didn't want to use uh, any really dark, I didn't want to use any black markers or um, pens just because like I, I just wanted to kind of challenge myself using different color things but then towards the end I was like I, I need to pull this together I need to make it look good enough to me but, but anyway I was like no that's not the point of this like I even argue with myself constantly and when I'm trying to relax and, and just kind of go with the flow a little bit okay so with this one is a the Bic Ultra Fine also. Um, I'm not using the lime green. I'm using the, uh, the I don't know what color that is, but it's the darker. They're, they only have two greens as far as I'm aware. And this is the darker one. I'm going in, instead of using black, I'm using this as an outline. So I go through, and then I even touched it up a little bit more after the video was done with uh, this pen. And it's, I'm, I was surprised it still come, uh, the smoothness of the drawing with it was still good, even going over the kind of like waxy colored pencil of the paper. Um, I had this slowed down because I was impressed with the smoothness of the pen that was, how it was going down. If you made it this far, watching the, me do the little touch-ups of the drawing really appreciate it uh and i this just kind of like my quirky weird style of how i approach coloring coloring pictures and how i'm figuring out how to use colors um and the next video that i do it'll be the watercolor well I'll include watercolor i don't think it'll be just watercolor it'll probably be like a mishmash frankenstein version of how this is. I'm not going to be drawing Frankenstein, I don't think, but talk about the process. The process will be Frankenstein. And if you have any questions about how I do this process, I'll try to answer it as good as I can. Uh, please hit like and subscribe, um, and then stay tuned for the next video. I'll try to get it in within two, a couple of weeks. It's the Really, the editing that slows me down because um, I don't have a whole lot of time to do it per day. But in any case, have a good one.